Stacy, you're not alone. Stacy is the author of many best-selling books. She's a speaker and a coach. She's the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide and has empowered hundreds of thousands of people from countries worldwide through her books, her websites, her e-courses, her educational videos, and live events. She is a health, lifestyle, and epilepsy coach. She is such a sincere person with a desire to always help others through a down-to-earth personality. It is my pleasure to introduce our third author, Stacy Chalemi. Before we begin, I ask you the same question I asked everyone else, okay? What motivated you to write your book and how long did it take you to complete? Hi everybody, my name is Stacy Chalemi, and as Linda said, I am a 20 times best-selling author, health and lifestyle, and I am a epilepsy coach, and my life and my passion had started from my own experiences in life. What happened was, um, in my life, at the age of five, my parents heard a gurgling noise in my bedroom. So my mother went to check on me, and as she went to check on me, she saw my lips turn blue and I was in a ground ball seizure. They immediately took me to the hospital, and they rushed me to the hospital, and immediately they induced me into a coma. They said that a virus had traveled into my brain, and that if I came out of this, most likely I would be paraplegic or I would have severe brain damage. So as I was in the hospital and as I was in a coma, my father, who is Greek actually, and he comes from a small island called Hios, was by my bedside at the time. And on the fourth day, he was praying. And in Greece, it's a very small island, and in the church, they have in front of the island a statue where tears would roll down the statue's eyes. So he was imagining that statue, and he was closing his eyes and praying that I would be okay. And when he opened my eye, his eyes and he looked at me, he saw a teardrop roll down from my eyes. And I opened my eyes and I looked at him, and the first thing I asked for was McDonald's french fries. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't have brain damage and I wasn't paraplegic, but I did have epilepsy. They diagnosed me with epilepsy and I struggled my entire life. It was a roller coaster ride in my life. And when I finally got to college, um, I was having a lot of difficulty. As you know, when you're in college, the late night studying, the stresses of trying to make the grades, all that contributed to an increase in my seizures. My seizures became so bad that I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to finish college. So at the time, we're going back in the day, I had written an article to the Epilepsy Foundation in Washington, D.C., and I asked them, would you please post this in your magazine. Ask people how they cope with this disorder. How can they, how can I get through this? Because I don't think I'm gonna be able to. So they published my article that I've written and over 300 letters, three to 400 letters came to my home from all over the United States and Canada. People with epilepsy sharing their stories, sharing their positive and inspirational stories about how they cope with epilepsy, how they live with it, and how I can live with it also. I was really touched by those letters and I finally realized that I'm not alone. There are people just like me all over the world who suffer exactly the way I do. And in a sense, I learned from these people. I no longer pity myself or I realized that there are people out there that have the same thing I do and they're getting through it and so can I. So I finished college, I got my degrees, and I went off and I got a job with a big corporation in New York City. And I was very excited, and I was also a little naive, as you know, when we're young kids, we think we can do it all, but we really can't. <laughs> so I was working with this big corporation, I landed this amazing job, and one day I was walking in the hallway and I felt an aura coming on. And an aura, for anybody that doesn't know what it is, is a signal that tells the brain that you're gonna fall into a seat. So as I was walking, I was looking around trying to find a safe spot, and there was no safe spot. So I ended up collapsing on the floor, and I was in a, a partial seizure where I was awake, but I couldn't move because I was having a seizure. So one of the producers walked over me, and he just kept walking. He just stepped right over me, and I'm looking above, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe 
he just walked over me and just kept walking. And I got up and I just went back to my job and 30 minutes later, a co-producer came over to me and said, Stacy, we like you so much, but I'm so sorry. We're gonna have to let you go because you don't meet the qualifications. And as you know, I knew just like everybody else that it wasn't because I didn't meet the qualifications because I did. It was because they saw me have a seizure and they didn't want to have to deal with anything. And so I didn't let it bother me. I said to myself, you know what? This just wasn't meant to be. I said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find something that, I, that is meant to be for me. And I walked out of there with my heads up high and I said, screw them. And I started to do freelance work and I started to work with a lot of different people, writing. And one day I had uh, met an herbalist and this herbalist needed a lot of research done. And I was starting to learn about health and healing and natural remedies. And I started applying it to my own life. And from, my seizures went from 12 seizures to six to five to four, three, two, one. And with the combination of my medications and the combination of changing my health, applying supplements, and changing the way I live, I was able to get my seizures under control. And so what I did was, is I got all those letters that were inspirational and that I thought could help people, and I put them together and I created a regimen. Because this regimen that I had, I had created for myself was working. And I thought to myself, you know what? If it could help a person with epilepsy, because it was just how to live life the right way, this could help anybody. Anybody, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, stress, anything. So what I did was, is I put that book together and I published it. And it did the best selling for people with epilepsy. And I had gotten a letter and I had my email. Someone said, I was in Barnes and Nobles and I saw your book. I was on the verge of suicide, and I read your book, and you gave me inspiration. I no longer wanted to end my life. You gave me inspiration to live. And at that moment, a light bulb went off, and I realized, you know what? This is my true passion, my true purpose in life. I realized that I, my purpose was to help people, because I have to tell you, the most, the most best personal feeling you can get is uh, uh, to be able to help another individual. And so I started to write and I started to um, do seminars and help people. And I started, I started working with the Epilepsy Foundation. They actually sent me to Washington to speak in front of Congress. And I spoke in front of Congress and I shared my stories and I went on to writing and various books and I had, had to stop driving for um, a while because my seizures came back and I didn't drive for 15 years. Wow. And so during those 15 years, I kind of felt imprisoned in my own home so until they found the right cocktail and medications <coughs> and I applied everything that I learned and my, my health went back to the way it was. So during that time, I wrote a lot of books and I wrote a lot of different things to help people. And as I was writing, I got a lot of feedback from people. And I was helping people just like you. People who wanted, you know, that they suffered from any disorder, from stress to diabetes, to high blood pressure, to epilepsy, you name it. People came to me and said, well, you changed my life. You gave me motivation. And so what I did was, is these things I needed to, what drove me was empowerment. I needed to empower myself, and then I was able to empower others. And I realized over the course of the years that empowerment comes from within. That we, everyone in this room has empowerment. We all carry the ability to empower ourselves and to empower other people. You can do anything you want in life as long as you're, you believe in yourself. So the first thing that um, I had learned was denial. People in life, including myself, for years I was in denial. I didn't want to face the obstacles in my life because I realized that if I had faced it, it was scary. People don't like change. We don't. We fear change because you know it's just something that we don't know what the outcome is going to be if we change our lives. But I learned that by overcoming my denial, by accepting who I am, accepting that nobody is perfect. Nobody's perfect. 
We live in, in a society that we have in the social media and on TV that say, everybody, they give you this persona, that stigmatism, that everybody's perfect, but no one's perfect. I don't believe in that word, be perfect. And, you know, everybody has something. It's just learning how to overcome it, how to overcome the obstacles in life. And after denial, you have to learn how to accept yourself. You have to be, learn that you live, you have to accept the person that you are. You know, whatever obstacles that you, you have in your life, they're not gonna go away. So the only way to move on in life is to accept who you are. This is who I am. And you have to learn to love yourself. How many times do you see people, they're just not satisfied with who they are as a person. They're just not happy with themselves. And they look in the mirror and they can't stand who they see. You have to pass that. And the only way to pass that is to learn how to love yourself. And everybody has the ability to love themselves. Everyone in this room has the capabilities. And I go over this in my book and I talk about how to learn how to love yourself and moving on in life. And I talk about creating short-term goals and long-term goals. I talk about how to boost your self-confidence. And I talk about different ways of getting through things. And the one thing that always helped me was the power of positive thinking. I don't think I would have gotten through life if I did not look at things in a positive way. And I would say to people, you know what? I actually am happy that I got epilepsy. And people would look at me like I'm a white job. But you know what? I would not be the person I am today if I did not go through what I did in life. Because when I look at myself and I look at having epilepsy, if I had that corporate job and I went on and I, I lived that life that I wanted to, I would end up being one of those people who like to buy those designer um, uh, pocketbooks, those nice high heels, have a martini on a Friday night with a bunch of friends, you know? <laughs> and have the lifestyle that, you know, we all we all see and, and kind of dream about it. Once in a while I do it, you know. And, you know, but instead, I had to go through a lot of obstacles in life. And it made me look at people differently. It made me look at myself differently. And it made me have compassion towards others as well. And life is, is, a, is a struggle for everybody. But if we learn how to overcome our obstacles in life, we can learn to live a very happy, healthy, and productive life. Life gives us a lot of obstacles. And sometimes people feel like, you know, one obstacle, obstacle occurs, they get over it, and then another one hits them again. And that can be very, very, very draining on a person. So you have to learn how to cope with obstacles. And I teach in my book how to go through obstacles. And I teach a step-by-step -step process on how you can live life and live a happy, healthy, productive life no matter what happens to your life. And a lot of people, that st it stops them from overcoming their obstacles because they don't think they can do it. They lack self-esteem. They don't see the power within themselves. They don't see how good of a person they really are inside. Everybody in this room has something special about themselves. We all are great people, and we all contribute something very special in society. If we went down the line, I assure you, if I say, what's your biggest strength in life? What do you think you're good at? Someone's gonna say something. And then you all have something special about yourselves, whether it's one thing, 10 things, or 100 things. We all are special individuals, and we have the capability to do anything we want in life. And it's learning how to do that. And with self-esteem, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in the person that you are. And I teach people, and I teach it in my, in my book, step by step, on how to create short-term goals and long-term goals. If you can accomplish one goal a day, no matter what it is, that's a big accomplishment, you know? And if you do that on a routine basis, you get to the point in life where you actually start seeing a new person because you're feeling good about yourself. You're realizing, you know what? I can do whatever I put my mind to. You have the strength to be who you are. And I talk about the power of positive thinking and looking at life and looking, instead of looking at the negative things in life, 
Start looking at the things that you have around you. Be grateful for what you have. Sometimes we always say, I want, I want, I want, I want. Well, look at what you have. Look at the people in your life, the people that just going outside and be able to look at that beautiful grass out there, to be able to have a drink in the morning and just to see the beauty around you, nature, the trees, the sun, what you're blessed with. You're blessed with your life. You know, there are people out there that have chronic illnesses that are dying and struggle every day in their lives. We all have the ability to overcome our obstacles in our life. It's being able to be grateful, to think of the positive things in life. And if you have people in your life that are pulling you down, you might want to consider maybe saying that you're a little bit of a distance. Not Xing them off the list, but saying, you know what? These people are pulling me down, and I, I, I might want to, you know, take a little breather from them for a while. You know, these are things that are important. You want people in your life that are going to pump you up, give you the support, the love, the endurance, the strength to say, you are worth it. I, you are anything you can put your mind to it. You all have the ability to be the person you want to be. You all are wonderful people. And any obstacle that you endure in life, whether it be stress or and whether it be anything that you endure, any, any disease, condition, illness, you could overcome it with the proper steps that I, I supply in my books and with the people that you surround yourself and the love you feel for yourself and the love that you feel that others have for you, it goes a long way in life. And I'm here to tell you that you can be anything you want to be in life. And you might be saying, my life's older, I'm older, you know, what do I got to live for? Oh, oh, oh. You got plenty to live for. <laughs> you know, I'm not a young kind of kid anymore. Oh, this is full. No, 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 no. You guys have your whole lives ahead of you. Like every single day you open your eyes and you take a breather, that's a blessing in itself. You get to see your grandkids. You get to see the people you love. You have friends that care. Isn't that worth living for? Gratitude, positivity. Being, having positive people around you, learning how to love yourself. There are people your age that don't even love themselves. They're so negative. Everything is negative, negative, negative. Is that the way you want to live the rest of your life? Don't you want to have things that might happen to you or happen to, to friends or family members and you want to be able to say, don't, you know what? I'm on your side. We're going to overcome this together because you have the empowerment. The, power, the empowerment inside you to overcome anything and you can help others. Because I say, take a tragedy or a trauma in your life, turn it into a positive event, take it, turn it into something positive, and then from there, help others. And it just, the world would be a better place if everybody could do that, do you think? Yes. Yeah. You know? I hope, you know, I what I did was is I wrote the book, Empower Yourself. And that book, was, it says, empower yourself, don't let your conditions empower you. But basically, it's about just empowering yourself, overcoming any obstacle in life. And the I wrote a journal, because I'm very big on journal, and I talk about it in my book, and I talk about different ways to help yourself. And I don't even talk about making a journal in the book, how to make your own journal. A lot of people don't want to make their own journal. You know? <laughs> it's just, so I created the Positivity and Gratitude Journal. And with the epilepsy, you know, you're not alone. A lot of people have epilepsy and have said that book changed their lives. So what I did was this year, I updated it and I created new content and I gave new resources to help people who have epilepsy or know people with epilepsy so they can learn to live a productive life. And you know, life does not have to end because we have something that's not right in our bodies. We have, we should all be happy, healthy, and productive individuals, and not, nothing in life should stop us from being that. So with those words, I'm here to help anybody. If anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, ask me questions. I do health coaching, life coaching, you know, epilepsy coaching, you name it. I'm there to help you guys. I even started a podcast called The Advisor. And, you know, I just want to be there to help anybody improve themselves and their lives. So thank you so much for giving me the time to talk.